that we've been able to maintain, God. Thank you, God, for even those who don't have a job, but you worked out unemployment for them, Master. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we thank you for all that you've done, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for keeping us healthy, God. Hallelujah. Some may have even had the COVID virus, but you brought them back. And so we say thank you, God, for everybody that survived. Hallelujah. 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 We say thank you, God, for everybody that made it through, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God, we pray for our church family, God. We ask that you continue to bring us together. Continue to show us how to stand in unity. Continue to show us how to do what is right in thy sight, God. Help us, God, to be pure in thy sight, God. Help us, God, to stand in righteousness and holiness. So when others see us, they'll be asking, who is that you serve? How is it that you are peaceful? How is it that you remain righteous? How is it that you have the ability to turn the other cheek? How is it that you have the mindset and the discipline not to say backbiting things about people, to turn against other people, to say things that would make you show that you might want vengeance? We say we love God. We say we serve God. And so we thank you, God, for the unity that you've given us, God, for showing us, God, how to stand and to do what's right in thy sight, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that we are strong. We thank you, God, that we are mighty. We thank you, God, that we are righteous in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We thank you, God, for every member that is here with us today. We thank you, God, for every member that's listening on live stream. We thank you, God, for every visitor that's listening to us on live stream. We praise God for what you are doing and continue to do by the name of the blood of Jesus. And God, we pray for our community, God. We pray for our community. We realize that there are people out there that need your help. And so we pray, God. We ask Even if they're having trials, God, let them remember that you have not forgotten them. You have not forgotten who they are. You have not forgotten that they are there. You have not forgotten that they're lying in their bed. You have not forgotten that they need more money. You have not forgotten that they need more help. In the name of Jesus, God, we ask that you would send it to the Lord. Send them the hope they need. Send them the encouragement they need. For those who are listening to my voice and they know you, God, strengthen them and keep them. For those who do not know you, God, we ask that you would deliver them, God. Let them understand that they need a Savior. There's not a better time than today than to repent of their sins and to ask you, God, to come into their heart that they might have righteousness in you, that they might have peace in you. And so we say thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 It's not too late. It does not matter what they've done. It does not matter where they've been. You are the God who forgives. You are the God who has mercy. You are the God who has love and kindness. And you, God, are able to take them from where they are and pick them up and sit them on solid ground. You did it for each and every one of us. And so you can do it for them. By the name of the blood of Jesus, you snatched us up. You pulled us out from where we were in our sin. And you said, not so, not anymore. You've repented, and I take you in as my child. And we ask you to do that for each and every one of them today, God. God, we pray against, we plead the blood of Jesus against the violence in our neighborhood. Father God, you see the violence, and we say no more. We ask you, God, to stop it, to snatch it out from out among us. There be no more killings, God. There be no more frustrations, God. There be no more stealings, God. You would do, God, what you do best. You can reign us in if we submit unto you. And so we ask that you would do it for our neighbors, God. Do it for our family members, God. Do it for those who are in the, under the sound of my voice. Take away the violence from our community, God. By the name of the blood of Jesus, move on your behalf. Move on our behalf, God. Move on our behalf for your name's sake that we might show you your glory and your honor, who you are, by the name of the blood of Jesus. And we say thank you, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
And God, we ask that you would take away the drugs from our community. Yes, they might be a crutch, but in the end, they're crippling us all. They cripple us all. The children can't, don't have parents to take care of them. The parents can't encourage the other, other people in the neighborhood. Sometimes they can't take care of their elders, having elder care. So many situations go undone by the drugs being in our neighborhood. It might be easy money, and it might feel good for a time, but lest you know your sin will find you out. So, God, we ask that you would remove it. Remove, God, the, the illusion that is going to give them victory. Remove the illusion that is going to give them peace. Let them know that you are the peace giver. You are the one who gives peace. You are the one who helps us lay our heads down at night. And we say thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we do know that many people have left because of the coronavirus. We do know they're no longer on the planet. And we're not acting like we don't understand that. And so, God, we ask that you would send peace to the people's hearts who are grieving. Somebody has lost a mother. Somebody has lost a father. Somebody has lost a cousin. Somebody has lost a husband. Somebody has lost a sister or a brother, a dear friend, a dear neighbor, a co-worker even that they really like is no longer on the planet because of what the world is going through. And so, God, we ask that you would send a bomb, a bomb upon their heart. Send a bomb, God. Send a bomb. Send something, God, that will heal them, that will let them know I can get through another day. I can get through another day. I can make it through another day. The day is not too dark. The day is not too long. I can get through another day because I serve Jesus Christ. I can get through another day because I'm calling on Jesus Christ. Let them, God, know, God, that you are able to do it for them, God. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would heal them. Heal them. Heal them, God. Oh, Father, heal them. Heal them so that they know that they can make it another day, that the grief doesn't have to be so overbearing, that the grief doesn't have to be so strong and so long that they can't survive another day. We ask that you would do it for the master by the name of the blood of Jesus. As only you can, you are the one who heals. It doesn't matter what we've gone through or what we see or what's been going on. You are the one who heals by the name of the blood of Jesus. And we certainly, God, we take the time to pray as the time approaches that you would take care of our election. Father God, you know the country is in turmoil and it's in division, but it's not something that you can't solve. It's not something that you can't fix. And so, God, we ask that you would move as you will. Do what you want to have done. Do what you want to have done. And we'll be careful to give your name the praise and the glory and the honor. And God, we will stand upright before you. It does not matter who becomes the next president. Father God, we pray for our pastor, Pastor Cleo Fergie, as she continues to lead us and guide us and show us how we get through day to day, being the leadership of our church. We thank you, God, for her mindset. We thank you, God, for giving her insight. We thank you, God, for giving her wisdom. We thank you, God, for giving her spiritual discernment. We thank you, God, for her push to do what is right in thy sight. We thank you, God, that she keeps praying before you, God. We praise God for her spouse that continues to uphold her and encourage her. By the name of the blood of Jesus, we thank you, God, as only you can do. Strengthen her and keep her, God. Let her know, God, that you are, she is right in thy sight. Oh, hallelujah, because she is doing what you say to do. And we thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah.
that like, oh, I can't make it another day. I pray for that person that's closest to hell, that you would bring them in, God, that you would spare their life. God, in the name of the blood of Jesus. And we'll all stand now and give God a praise. Let's stand and give God a praise. Let the neighborhood today. I'm glad we made it to another week and we're able to come together outside and lift up the name of Jesus. And I'm happy to see you all on the live stream. I ask you all participate, participate with us as we worship and praise God.
that's your desire, say, I just want to please your heart. Let the meditations of my mouth. And I just want to worship you. The words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight. I just want to see your face. God, I just want to behold you and be in your presence. I just want to love on today. We are so grateful today. I am grateful. How many of you are really grateful for the Lord? He don't have to repent of anything that he said. He didn't talk just to hear himself talking. What he said, he knew it was true. He knew it would benefit us. All we have to do as his children is to abide in that word and believe the word of God. We give God glory and praise. We give him glory and we give him praise for all things. We're ready for the word of God and I believe the preacher is here to hear. We're ready to hear him and I believe he's ready to be heard. Reverend Ronald Bowen is coming to us this morning in the word of God. Come, Reverend Bowden. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet and give God some praise. Amen. Stand up on your feet and give God some praise. and heavenly father lord we bless you today we thank you for your goodness and your mercy thank you for another opportunity to be among the people of god to declare your holy and your righteous word amen for we know that jesus christ is lord jesus christ is lord and we come to worship and exalt him today we thank you god for just giving us a word to give to your people and to give to the people. Amen. Thank God that his word, as so often I hear Reverend Beth Ann Coleman say, 
you know, this is his word. This is his word. We didn't write it. We didn't make it up. I had to pray and ask him to just help me tone it down because it was a real rebuke to the people of God. Amen. I'm telling you. It was a rebuke to the people of God. But thank God, his word is always good. Amen. Revelation 12 and 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Praise the Lord. As we look at this portion of Scripture, we see that it's talking about a certain individual. And it lets you know exactly who that individual is. He's called the great dragon. He's called the more access to the throne of God. And the scripture tells us later that he is very angry. Woe unto the people on the earth. For the devil is full of wrath because he, he knows his time is short. But the thing I want to concentrate on more than anything is what this verse of scripture seems to tell me is going to be the devil's greatest achievement toward the end of time. As we come to the last days, that tribulation period, the last seven years of, of God's dealing on the earth before Christ comes to set up his kingdom, this verse of scripture says that the main accomplishment that Satan is going to have is that he deceiveth the whole world. He deceiveth the whole world. Now, you know me, I like to look up words, and that word deceive means to mislead by a false appearance or false statement. To mislead by a false appearance or false statement. To mislead means to cause to go wrongly or to go astray. To lead into error. I have a simple definition for the word deceive, and we did a study on it some years ago. And my simple definition of deceive is to cause you to not believe the truth and to believe what's not true. To cause you to not believe the truth and to believe what's not true. The next question someone might ask is, what is truth? When Jesus stood before Pilate, he said he came to bear witness of the truth. And Pilate said sarcastically, what is truth? And people today have that same question and that same mentality of sarcasm. What is truth? You know, the world's definition of truth is whatever you choose to believe, whatever you choose to accept, that's your truth. Amen. By that definition, every man has his own version of truth. There's no absolute. What's true for you is true for you, and what's true for you is what's true for you. There's no absolute. That's what the world says. But God has his own definition of truth. Jesus, when he was praying for his uh, disciples, he prayed, uh, Lord, to the Father. He said, Father, sanctify them through the truth. He said, thy word is truth. Then he followed it up later where he says, if you continue in my word, you will know the truth and the truth will will make you free. Can you say amen? Amen, amen. So Jesus went even further where he made a statement that's really a crazy statement if it's not true. For he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. No man can come to the Father but by me. So we see God's definition of truth is the word of God. The Holy Scriptures, the Bible, God's definition of truth is his son, the word of God, the living word and the written word. Amen. How will Satan deceive the whole world? By getting them to not believe the truth and to believe a lie. The world says that man wrote the Bible. So it's imperfect. It's full of contradictions. It's unreliable. It can't be trusted. Just a bunch of fairy tales, a bunch of fables. But the Bible declares itself to be God-breathed, God-inspired. Yes, men wrote, but they wrote as God inspired them to write. And they wrote what God inspired them to write. Amen. The Bible says that it even goes as far as to say that it is already forever settled 
in heaven. Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away before his word would pass away. Amen. The world says, the world says that Jesus was just an ordinary man who did extraordinary things. He was just a great teacher. He was a mighty prophet, but in no way was he God. But the Bible says that God, Jesus was God in a physical human body. For in the Gospel of John, the first chapter, the first verse, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And if you skip down to the 14th verse, it says, That same Word who was with God and who was God, the Word became flesh. The Word took on a human body and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. They say squash them if they get around you, amen? <laughs> Praise God. The Bible says that Jesus was God in a physical human body. The angel, when announcing to the Virgin Mary what was getting ready to take place to her, how she was going to give birth to a child, and they should name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. She asked, how is this going to happen? Seeing as how I've never been with a man, I've never had intercourse with a man, how is this going to happen? And the angel told her that the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Don't be deceived. The world says there are several ways to get to heaven. As long as you're faithful to what you believe, you'll be okay. But the Bible says there's only one way to heaven. And Jesus said, I am that way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Peter, when he was talking to the religious Jewish council, when he was talking to them about why he was preaching the gospel, why he was preaching about Jesus, they told him, don't preach that name anymore. But he told them, he said, there is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. There's salvation in no other name than the name of Jesus. Don't be deceived. Amen. The world says when you die, it's all over. You're done. It's the end. Or they'll say, there is no heaven. Or there is no hell. Or they'll say, everybody goes to heaven when they die. Or they'll say, hell is a place where you're going to have a good time. You're going to go there and party and have fun. But what does the Bible say? The Bible say that death is not the end. For in Hebrews 9, 27, it says it is appointed unto man once to die. And after death comes a judgment. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10 says we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive for the things which were done in this body, whatever was done, whether it be good or evil. Don't be deceived. Bible says hell is not a good time place. It's not a place to party, but it's a place of outer darkness. It's a place of torment. It's a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's a place where the fire will never be quenched. What does the Bible say about heaven? Everybody goes to heaven, the world says, but the Bible says everybody don't go to heaven. You got to prepare to go there. Amen. You must be born again. You've got to repent and turn from your sins and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus said in John 3 and 3, except the man be born again. He cannot see. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God have raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Don't be deceived. Don't believe the lie. Satan will deceive the whole world by causing men not to believe the truth. And sadly, his deception is not limited just to the unbeliever. It's not limited to them outside. But many who claim to be Christians have also fallen under his deception. See, this is what my whole message was going to be about, but I had to change it up a little bit, amen. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, he gave me the wisdom to be able to do it because I don't want to be airing all the laundry. I was always taught you don't air all your dirty laundry in front of everybody. Amen? 
there was two events that happened a couple weeks ago that troubled me greatly. One of them I was on Facebook. Yes, I do go on Facebook. And there was an article on there that was talking about this prophet. He had a church, I believe it was in Atlanta, over a thousand members. So he was pastoring, he was a prophet. He offered biblical counseling. But while he was prophesying, while he was preaching and, and pastoring a church, and while he was offering biblical counseling, he was also physically abusing his wife. Now, the, the, the brother of the wife confronted this prophet. He had his wife videotaped me, I guess on her phone, where he confronted him. It got a little confrontational and a tussle took place. Well, the brother got the best of the bishop and told him, if you put your hands on my sister again, I'm going to hurt you real bad. Well, before the bishop, or before the prophet could leave, or as he was leaving from the place where all this stuff was taking place, he looked at the brother and told him, as far as his sister, his wife, he said, I'm a killer. So the brother asked his wife, who was taping, you're still taping, right? You got this on tape, right? He threatened your life. He threatened her life. Call the police. Call the police. The wife is like, no, don't call the police. Still protecting them. Don't call the police. He threatened your life. Call the police. No, don't call. She kept on, kept on, kept on. Stood over her body and fired several more shots. That man was that so-called prophet. Then, a few days later, I'm watching 2020. And they had, some of you might have seen it. They had an episode on there about a, a professional basketball player named Lorenz Wright who was murdered over 10 years ago. It was a closed case because they couldn't find a murder weapon. They had suspects, but they never had enough evidence to charge anybody. So it was a closed case for 10 years. Then finally, someone notified them and told them where they could find the murder weapon. They went and searched the lake and they found the murder weapon. They did ballistics testing on it and found out that this weapon was indeed the one that was used to kill this basketball player. Well, the person who let them know where to find the gun had knowledge of the crime and he implicated three people, two men and the basketball player's wife. The basketball player's wife had conspired, but they were going through a divorce, they were going through troubles. She had conspired with these two men to have her husband killed so she could collect the insurance policy. Now that's bad enough, but the thing that got me that really troubled my heart was during that 10 year period, this woman allegedly got ordained, became a minister, and then started pastoring the church. All this stuff going on behind the scenes, and she got the nerve to be passing the church. No guilt, no conviction, and I thought about those things. A couple of days later, I thought about it, and I just got so grieved, I began to weep. And I asked God, I said, Lord, what has happened to your church? What has happened to your church? But the Lord took me back to Matthew, the seventh chapter, where he said, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those that do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. He said, many going to come in that last day on the day of judgment, and they're going to say, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? And Lord, didn't we cast out devils in your name? And Lord, didn't we do many other wonderful works in your name? And he said, I will profess unto them. I will say unto them, depart from me. I never knew you. He didn't say, I used to know you, and I don't know you no more. I used to have a relationship with you, but I don't have a relationship anymore. He said, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Everybody that say they say they say. Everybody that say they're a Christian is not a Christian. Amen. And the Lord knew the deception that would come in the end times. And he warned us before time. He told us several times in his word to not be deceived. I just want to look at a couple of them before we close. Amen. 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, the ninth verse, reading from the New Living Translation. It says, don't you realize, listen to the word of God, don't you realize 
that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God. He says, don't fool yourselves. In the King James, it says, be not conceived. In the New Living Translation, it says, don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or abusive or cheap people, none of these, say none of these, will inherit the kingdom of God. He says, and some of you were once like that, praise God, but you were cleansed, you were made holy, you were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. That's a good place to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. So many today, bless the name of God. Ephesians 5, 3 and 6, again in the New Living Translation, says, let there be no sexual immorality, impurity or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. Don't be fooled. Again, King James says, let no man deceive you. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. For the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what politicians say. I don't even care what so -called, some so-called preachers may say. God's word is right. And God believers, while they're doing what unbelievers do. Amen. You think you're going to win them to Christ. But just the opposite will happen. They will win you over to their ungodly practices. That's what the word of God says. The word of God says you're not going to win them so per se. But they're going to win you. If you're engaging and in, in, in being involved with them in the things, the ungodly things that they do. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about you, you can't have no unsaved friends or no unsaved acquaintances. We're not talking about that. How else are you going to let your light so shine unless you be around folk? But the Bible is talking about when you are engaging in them, when they're engaging in their ungodly practices. If you keep hanging around, soon when you are hanging around with them while they're getting high and getting drunk, pretty soon you're going to be getting high and getting drunk with them. Amen. If you keep hanging around them when they're talking about how much fun they have when they go to the bars and the clubs, if you keep hanging around after a while, you're going to end up going to the bars and the clubs with them. You keep hanging around them while they're talking about how much fun they had at the strip joint. Amen. You're going to want to, after a while, you're going to want to find out what's going on over there. And you're going to be there. And before you know it, you might be going more than they do. Evil communications. Corrupt good manners. Don't be deceived. Don't believe the lie. You are not that strong. Did you hear what I said? You are not that anointed that you can hang around that kind of stuff and not be affected by it. Amen. That's why the word admonishes us, come out from among them and be ye separate. Separate yourself and touch not the unclean thing. He said, and then I'll receive you until you myself, and I'll be your God, and you will be my people. Can you say amen? At the end of this age, Satan's testimony will be that he deceived the whole world. And the truth be told, we were all at one time under the deception of Satan. Ephesians, the second chapter, starting with verse 1, in the New Living Translation, again says, Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. And by our very nature, we were subject to God's anger 
just like everyone else. But God, but God, who is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. You need to recognize today, God didn't save you because you were so good. God didn't save you because you were so faithful. God didn't save you because you did everything right. You dotted every I and crossed every T. God saved you because of what Jesus Christ did. Because he died on the cross. Because he paid the penalty for your sin. And you believed in him and you accepted him and you trusted in him. And that's why you're saved today. Amen. He even goes on a little further in this same verse, this same chapter, where he says, It's by grace that you are saved. Through faith, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Nobody got anything to boast about. You can't boast about how good you are and look down on somebody else because you may not have done some of the things they've done. You may not have been involved in some of the things they've been involved in. But if you didn't get saved, you'd be going to the same hell that they go into. Bless the name of God. Thank God for grace, for amazing grace. I can remember a time in my life before I knew the Lord. I was right there in Ephesians, the second chapter, doing what I wanted to do. Everything I thought I was big enough to do. Thought I was all right, but I was on my way to hell. But one day God opened my eyes. One day God let me see the error of my ways. He let me see the direction that I was going. And it was headed for destruction. And God gave me grace and favor to turn around, to call on Jesus. And he saved me. And he delivered me. And he set me on the right path. That's why I can say, like the old hymn used to say, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I thank God for opening my eyes. And I thank God for the truth of God's word that's going forth right now. Hallelujah. God's word, God's truth is going forth right now. And he's letting you know that Satan is your father if you're not saved. You're under his control. You're under his influence. You may not realize it. One of the greatest deceptions that Satan has is he wants you to think he's a man in a red suit with horns and a pitchfork. But I want you to know the Bible says that Satan is a murderer very from the very beginning. So he's a liar and the father of lies. Jesus said he's a thief and he comes to steal. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy you. He wants to take you out of here. He wants to send you to hell. But Jesus loved you so much that he came and died. Hallelujah. Paid the price so that you would not have to die. He paid the price so that you could be called a child of God. So I thank God for his mercy and I thank God for his grace. I thank God that the door is open for you to come and receive him as your savior. The Bible says, let the wicked man forsake his way. Let the unrighteous man forsake his thoughts. Let him turn unto the Lord. And he will have mercy on him. Let him return to our God and he will abundantly pardon him. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you're involved in right now. If you call on Jesus, the song the old saints used to say, if you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. If you call on him, he will answer prayer. He will save you. He will deliver you. He will set you free. If you call on him, oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a great God. He's the only true and wise God. Oh, that's not being politically correct. How are you going to say you're the only one that's right? Because God said I'm the only one that's right. His word says I'm the only one that's right. He said his word is true. So anything contrary to his word, if it's not true, what is it? It's a lie. Jesus is the only way. I don't care if you get mad at me. Jesus Christ is the only way. Salvation is only through him. You can get involved in religion if you want to, but getting involved in religion don't cleanse your soul from sin. It only takes the blood of Jesus to wash you and cleanse you from your sin. It's the blood of Jesus that makes you whole. It's the blood of Jesus that makes you acceptable to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You heard the truth this morning. You heard the truth this morning. 
The question now is, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to keep on letting the devil fool you? Are you going to keep on letting the devil trick you? Or are you going to agree and accept what God has said? God loves you. God loves you. I want you to know that God loves you. God cares for you. God has a plan for your life if you just come to him. And that's my prayer for you today. Those of you that are watching, those of you that are under the sound of my voice, ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. Repent. Be willing to repent. That means to turn away. Turn away from your sin. Nobody don't have to tell you you're doing wrong. You know you're doing wrong. You know it. But he still loves you. He's a good God. He's a good God. And I bless his name today. Let's just pray. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus, as your word has gone forth, God, that it has touched the minds and hearts of those that have heard. Oh, my Father, we thank you for the promise of your word, for we know that it has gone where you want it to go. It has accomplished what you wanted to accomplish, and it has prospered to the place where you have sent it. So, Lord, all those that hear and the conviction have hit, have hit their hearts, let them cry out to you right now. Those that are not saved and never asked you to come into their life, let them ask you to come into their life right now. Let them say, Father, I'm sorry for the things I've done. I want Jesus to come into my heart and save me. I give him control of my life right now. Take me, Jesus, and be my Lord and be my Savior. If you say that and really mean it, God has saved you. God will save you and he'll come into your heart and he'll change you. Bless his name. Maybe some of you name the name of Christ and have gotten entangled in things. Gotten involved in things and Satan has fooled you into thinking that it's okay, it's all right. You're the man of God. You're the prophet of God. You're the apostle. So you can kind of get away with some stuff that other folk can't get away with. That's a lie or the deception that Satan speaks to those in leadership. But the word of God says the unrighteous shall not. No matter how much you say you're saved, no matter how long you say you've been saved, God says repent. Turn. He will deliver you. He will help you. You may have been come and become entangled, and it's a stronghold, but he says that the weapons that he has given us are able to pull down the strongholds of the enemy. You can be free today. Call on him. Repent. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to strengthen you, wash you, cleanse you. Set your feet on a straight path. It's a terrible thing to be in church, to preach the word, to do all the things that are done in church and die and go to hell. God just wants us to be real. Father, help all of us. Help me. All of us sitting here, help us just to be real. Not to put on no airs, not to fake, but just be real. If we got issues, God, help us to admit we got them and ask you to help us. Help us to be loving, God, to one another and not look down on each other. Because one person might be weak in one area and we come down on them, but we have weaknesses in our area, in our lives too. And where we're weak, they may be strong. And where they're weak, we may be strong. Oh God, help us to love one another. To believe and to remember that all of us are dependent upon you. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for Satan being bound. We thank you for setting the minds of the captives free. We thank you that this word is accomplishing what you desire for it to accomplish. Even if it doesn't accomplish it today. We thank you that seed has been planted. It will be watered. And you will give the increase. And we bless you for it. And we thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' name that we ask it. People of God, just stand on your feet and give God a hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can stand up on your feet, stand on your feet and give God praise. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a word. Ay, 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 ay. What a word. Thank you, Lord.
Lord. Thank you. Thank you for that word of God. Thank you that you sent it to us. Thank you for those that hear it, oh God. Ah, through knowledge shall the righteous be delivered. I thank God. You may be seated. I thank God for the word of God that was preached to us today. That was a ready word. And I'm glad I was here to hear it, to receive it. We didn't hear it just to hear it. Wherever you was touched with that word, you become a doer of that word. The word of God must abide in you. We must abide in the word of God, not bending to the left or to the right, but staying where God has called us. We want to go to heaven. And I often say, it's his heaven. Because I say I'm going, don't make me go there. If I'm not living right and doing what the word says, I'm not going to heaven. Oh, yeah, yeah. And man don't have a heaven for you. He doesn't have a place for you. Thank you, Reverend Bowling, for letting the Lord use you. We thank God. We're going to get our... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Glory, thank you, thank you, thank you. Glory, thank you, Lord, thank you. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sister Deborah is coming with the announcements, after which we're going to get our offering. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. inside and you'll move on through outside understanding it come through put your money in the basket and don't forget to leave the offering if you're here today don't forget your preacher the mighty word we heard today we thank god for all of you that came looking to see you again next sunday god be willing god be willing again i thank god for that word of god oh, it, 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 it touched me it touched me Yes, Sister Linda, I can't read. I don't know yet. Or maybe, I hope so. The weather, according to the weather, yes, according to the weather. I like it outside. I don't like those bugs that's flying, but we can, we can, we can squash those and get rid of them. If Reverend Bolin is preaching and can kill one, we can sure sit and kill one. Amen? It's no big thing. Let us stand. Offering in hand. I'm through this way and going out the front. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you today for your presence with us and in us. And those that were here that are not in the family, we pray, God, that souls will come into the kingdom of God. Lord, we look at the world today and see all the things that's going on. They need you. We need you. The world needs Jesus. So bless and have your way. Now take us from this place, but never from your presence. In the name of Jesus, oh God, be with us and guide us and direct us and keep us. Keep us, Lord, unto yourself. Lord, in Jesus' precious name, we pray with